Pero bueno. Well, thank you, Avid, for helping with my project. Uh, could you say a little bit about yourself? Of course. Uh, my name is Roman Gonzalez. I am from Peru. I am an electronic engineer, also system engineer. I did a master in industrial automatic and human automatic, and also a PhD in signal and image processing. Currently, I am uh, the CEO of uh, Business on Engineering and Technology, BTEC. Uh, this is a, a small startup uh, created to, to help uh, new generation in research activities. And also, I am a full professor at Universidad Nacional Tecnológica de Lima Sur in Peru. Um, at the university, what subjects do you teach? Uh, normally, I teach a uh, lesson for thesis reductions, uh, research uh, writing, and also satellite communication. And in Peru, are there many people that are interested in space exploration development, or is it a very small group? Yeah, it's a small group, but in last year, the, the group is increasing, yeah. Mm, there are a lot of interests, uh, in, especially in young professionals, to learn some uh, subject related to, to space. So uh, in 2013, in Peru, uh, one university launched uh, a small satellite in 2014, also two other university launch uh, nano satellite to, to space. So uh, there are people uh, interested in space technology. Also many Peruvians, young professionals participated in Mars exploration simulations. And in Peru, we have our Peruvian Space Agency and we have an air observation satellite and so uh, currently there are people uh, trying to explore how to use the satellite images for different applications. And what are some of the best applications that you've seen those images used for in terms of actually helping the regular person in per Peru? Uh, sorry? Um, so you, you were talking about the application of uh, satellite images. Um, and I mean, does this help like with uh, city planning and with the farmers and like, what are some ways that those images can, can help uh, with the regular person? Yeah, uh, we use uh, the satellite images for different applications. For example, uh, post-disaster management. So uh, in Peru, we have a different natural disaster like landslide, earthquake, floods, and we can use uh, satellite images to, to do uh, post-disaster management to help uh, decision makers to, to identify the most affected areas, to identify the, the type of health to need bring to, to these uh, areas, to this population. Another application uh, is uh, in agriculture application for precision agriculture, precision uh, farming, helping to identify some problems or irrigation problems in, in, the, in the field. Uh, other application are uh, to, to try to organize the, the growth of the urban areas. So to, to try to organize uh, a better growth of urban areas uh, and also application regarding uh, water monitoring, deforestation, uh, Amazon monitoring. So um, we have uh, many applications. And you know, just coming back uh, to you and your career, uh, what got you interested in engineering? So uh, when I was a child, uh, 
I saw in in a TV the the news about remember how to people go to the moon. So uh, when I was a child, uh, I was very interested to to do and to to be involved in in aerospace technology. So. Uh, I remember my my dream was uh, I want to be an astronaut. <laughs> so um, the idea is to to study some. The idea was to study some uh, subject related to to this kind of technology. So in Peru we don't have an aerospace engineering program. So uh, the more related was uh, electronic uh, engineering. So ap after that. Uh, I studied electronic engineering. I had the possibility to to have a scholarship to do my my master in France. So I, I traveled to, to France to, to do my master. And staying in France, I won a scholarship to to pursue a, a doctorate, a PhD. So and for for my luck, uh, I pursued my PhD with the French Space Agency. So uh, this is uh, why I remember my, my dream of when I was a child. So, uh, and my work in the French Space Agency was related to satellite images. And so I was also the, the, the small, uh, group of people working uh, in a project that involved uh, not only French Space Agency but also the German Aerospace Center, and uh, I was uh, I have the possibility to to stay one year in in Germany also working in the German Aerospace Center together with the people working with the space control to the International Space Station. So uh, I have the, the possibility to, to talk with, with him and uh, to, to learn more about the, the space uh, activities, the, the space mission, uh, and, and compare, for example, how to German Aerospace uh, Center work and how to French Space Agency work in, in the space missions. And so you went to school in France. Does that mean you also know how to speak French? Yeah, I speak some some French. <laughs> <laughs> Probably more French than I could speak Spanish. <laughs> um, maybe, maybe. And so do you still have the dream of someday becoming an astronaut? Yeah, of course. Uh, I also participate in these uh, analog missions to, to explore Mars in, in Utah Desert uh, from the Mars Society. And uh, also my, my, my passion is still to, to be an, an, an astronaut and maybe it will be some difficult because uh, the nationality. So in Peru, we don't have a a program to to form or to train in astronauts, uh, but uh, why not in the future? Well, it's amazing um, to look at sort of the progression of Rocket Labs. Um, the Rocket Labs, uh, is, you know, started out in New Zealand, and you know they were the first. Uh, company outside of the US to actually be able to launch things in orbit. And now there are companies grown to the point that they're talking about launching bigger and bigger things and maybe even people at some point. Uh, and my thought is, um, if such a country could happen in as such a, a company can be created in New Zealand, you know, why not Peru? And I was wondering uh, what your thoughts were. Yeah, of course, of course. Uh... We have in Peru very a lot of people interested in, in aerospace development. So maybe a step by step in the future could be possible. And um, 
Did you know that NASA is planning to send people back to the moon in 2024? Yeah, I, I know the, the, the project that will be an uh, interesting mission that uh, could put in, in the moon surface the, the first woman. Yeah. And uh, what do you think about it? I think uh, this is an important mission because it's uh, a step to, to stay going ahead to discover new frontiers. So to, to go, for example, I, I think to go to, to Mars uh, with astronaut, we need uh, a first step uh, to, to come back to the moon and maybe convert the, the moon in a small uh, space station and after to, to go to the Mars or to go to, to other frontiers or to go to other planets. There's a lot of people that say, why are we sending people to the moon when we have uh, poverty and global climate change and pollution and social justice issues and all these issues uh, on earth. Uh, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I think uh, a lot of people think about why to invest in, in space exploration in contrast to, to invest in, in health, in, in schools, in education. But I think that uh, the space technology brings a lot of uh, knowledge for our current life. So uh, I think the, the population need to understand that the invest in space exploration is useful. For example, uh, all, everybody has in her, in her uh, smartphones the GPS, but the GPS was developed for space, uh, space technology. So uh, currently we, we have or we use a lot of uh, technologies that was developed first for space exploration. Also the telecommunication, also the, the material used by uh, people uh, fight to the, to the fire or uh, fire bomb that uh, was developed for the astronaut suites. So uh, also in the, in the health the medicine, uh, a lot of uh, research uh, developed in, in the space. Uh, now we are currently use it in, in our current life. So, uh, invest in, in the space exploration is very useful and invest in this kind of mission to, to go again to, to the moon or go to, to Mars or to, to other uh, exoplanets, I, I, I don't know, could bring a lot of technology that we can use in, in here in, in the air. That's a very good point. But also in addition to the technology, um, us going to the moon the first time inspired you and hopefully lots of other people to go into engineering. And you are all solving problems here on earth, making earth better. Yeah, of course. Also the, the space technology is uh, for inspirations also to, to demonstrate the the, the capacity of the, the humankind. So uh, it, it's very important. Um, I don't know how familiar you are with the 1990s and the growth of the internet. Um, in 1990, almost nobody had email or access to the web. And in 2000, everybody pretty much had email and access to the web, at least in the US. And it was a very transformative time where things that weren't even imagined in 1990 became commonplace in 2000. And I feel like that the 2020s are going to be the same way to space exploration, that in 2030, there'll be things that are happening on a daily basis, an hourly basis, that we don't even imagine being possible now. Uh, and I 
look at like SpaceX and their Starship development uh, and how that might open up space in an economical way like never before. And I was wondering, do you think the 2020s are really going to be um, as transformative uh, as that? Or do you think that may be a little bit too uh, optimistic? Yeah, uh, exactly. Uh, as you say, uh, in in the in the in the time we have uh, many technological changes, so for the space, I think twenty uh, twenty is is important because uh, the participation of the private company. So normally, uh, the space development was reserved only for the government. Uh, the nation that uh, put the the money to to develop uh, all the missions, but now we have an important participation of the private company like SpaceX or, or other examples. So and uh, the participation of the private company is, is very important. So and the participation of the private company could help to democratize the, the access to, to the space for all, all people, for, for different countries. So, and this is a, a change. So uh, I, I think the, the 2020s is, is a change uh, in the space development, uh, mainly due to the private company participations. And I see this time as being right before a new space age. And this series of videos is kind of a way for us to create a time capsule for people 50 years or 100 years from now to kind of see what people were thinking before this new space age. If there was a thought or an observation or, or something that you would like people 50 years or 100 years from now to know about this time, what would it be? Uh, I think it could be that uh, to say that in this in this time we are trying to, to develop uh, a special missions to go to, to other planets uh, with astronauts and the the first step so we we have uh, different missions that sent uh, Robert or sons to, to Mars, for example. But we don't have yet a missions that can return from Mars. And this is a, a important step. If we are thinking to, to send astronauts to Mars, we need to, to think how to return astronauts from, from Mars. So uh, in, in this time, we are trying to, to, to do, to develop this kind of technology. To, to return from uh, some samples from Mars. And after that, I think we can think about how to send and return astronauts from Mars or for other planets. So uh, in this time, we are looking this kind of technology. And I hope that the, the future in, in 50 uh, years, the, the people can talk about how easy or how difficult it is bring something from Mars. Yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of amazing how now we can travel around the world in less than a day. And, uh, you know, 100 years ago, that that capacity wasn't wasn't there. And they would have thought it was amazing to, to see such a thing. Yeah, uh, the, the technology is uh, increasing rapidly. So you already said how to some years ago the internet is, is not here, so no, no people have an email. Uh, so in, in my case, for example, I was born in Sikwani, so Sikwani is a small city in, in Peru. So uh, when I study my primary school or my secondary school, I don't know, uh, I didn't know it's the internet, so I, I didn't have an, an email. And to study the, the university, uh, I must to, to move to, to a bigger city uh, called Cusco in Peru. 
to, to study electronic engineering. And so in Cusco is a, a bigger city than Sicuani and in Cusco already start the, the internet, but I didn't know how to use uh, the internet. So it was uh, a small shock for me how to, to, to know and to manage uh, uh, this kind of technology because also how, in, at the university we had uh, uh, classmates so and they already know internet but me no so it was a, a, a small shock but uh, I think uh, all changes uh, at the beginning are, are difficult but the people can adapt to, to the technology changes and, and continue to, to, to develop new technologies. And yeah, it's, it's uh, amazing. I think I just like the transition from like the horse to the car and, uh, you know, from um, not having electrical power to electrical power and, you know, the automobile and all, all these things have had such a profound effect on society and the way we live. Yeah, yeah, all, all the transition is, is uh, in, at the beginning some difficult, but after that uh, we can adapt. So it's, it's a future of this characteristic of, of the humankind. So we can adapt to, to all the technologies and yeah, in, in the future I think will be normal to, to travel to, to, to the space for, to, to, to have a civil, civil travel, yeah? not only for, for astronauts, but also for people, walking people. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I know we talked about a lot, um, but is there anything that you wanted to talk about that we didn't get to? Uh, I'm sure also <laughs> we can talk about uh, what what you want. <laughs> oh, well, I mean that's that's pretty much all I I had to talk about. But I was wondering if uh, you wanted to talk about any particular subject, or ha if you had some comments or questions or anything like that. Uh, for my side, I think an, an important uh, aspect uh, to talk maybe is the, how to uh, motivate uh, new generations to, to study uh, some uh, career related to, to STEM, so to science, technology, or engineering, or to math, because uh, we need uh, around the world more people related to, to these areas because uh, we need more uh, research activities. So for example, in, in this uh, emergency situation due to the COVID-19, uh, we have uh, the opportunity to know how research activities is important to try to uh, develop a, a vaccine to try to develop a new test to, to detect COVID-19 or to develop a mechanical ventilator or other uh, medical instruments to, to help to, to combat to, to COVID-19. So I think uh, research, it's, it's important. I, we need to, in the future, we need to have more uh, scientists, more research, uh, and we need to to inspire the new generation to to try to, to study this kind of uh, careers or professional careers. And what do you think would be required to inspire them? What should be done? I think uh, we need to to do a dissemination of the results of the different research project because. Uh, I, I am a researcher, yeah, and normally the, we as researchers, we write articles, papers, research articles, research papers, and publish them to, uh, to communicate our results from our research project. But this kind of uh, research articles is oriented to technical people. 
but we don't think about how to disseminate or how to uh, public our result thinking to the general public because uh, the, the the word that we use is oriented to technical people to, to people that will be understand the, the technical thing about our research by, but we need to to use also uh, colloquial words that can be understood by general public so uh, we need to to do this kind of uh, science communication activities for general public and i think the research uh, not think about about that and we need to to do this kind of of, of activities also to to public our result but for general public not only for technical public we we have um kind of a uh, a career uh, called science communicator, somebody that actually studies the, the science and then figures out a way to make it accessible to the general public. And it sounds like what you're saying is we need more of those people that are uh, learning what the researchers are doing. They know how to talk to the everyday person without that technical knowledge. And they actually are, are taking that information and communicating in a way that, that they can relate to and engage with and and that every sentence they're not looking up uh, every other word in a dictionary because uh, they don't know what that is and then you have to go look up the words that you looked up <laughs> because it's so uh, so different than what everyday people are are related to yeah and I, I think it is, it's very important work so uh, as you said may uh, some some countries uh, there are already people that do the, the work of uh, science communicator, but uh, other countries don't have yet uh, a people like this. So we need to, 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 to train people because also uh, it is necessary to, to train more people to do this kind of, of activities. So it's a, I think it's a, a new, a new work because before we didn't have this this kind of science communicator but uh, we need to 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 have uh, training i don't know courses or lessons uh, a master degrees or, or something like this to to prepare to to train uh, new people to to do this kind of jobs so, of uh, science communicator and we need especially them. So, sorry especially in in this kind of, of situation that uh, for the covid-19 for example a lot of uh, fake news in in the social network so uh, some fake news related to to covid-19 related to to vaccination process fake news related to to how to combat uh, which kind of uh, medicine we can take to, to combat the COVID-19 or a lot of fake news. So we need a science communicator to, to uh, avoid this kind of uh, fake news. Yeah, it's uh, really a, a challenge. Um, and we need science communicators uh, that speak every language, uh, you know, not just English, but Spanish and and uh, um, you know Hindi and Chinese and every yeah. language. <laughs> yes, it is necessary. Well, I really appreciate the time and thank you so much for um, letting me talk to you. Uh, it's amazing to see what you're doing there in Peru, and um, you know the big opportunities that uh, we have as humanity. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to, to talk with you and to participate in, in your project. So it was a very pleasure to, to stay and, and talk with you. I um, hope we meet again sometime. Of course. <laughs> well, uh, you have a good rest of your day. And um, until then. Thank you very much. See you. Bye-bye. Uh,